Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to customize a brand new feature available for Squarespace products known as Variant Buttons. In this tutorial, we're going to use custom CSS to change the style of these buttons and even create a unique hover and a unique selected effect. Now, as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but these are super duper customizable. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can show you exactly how they work. So you'll know what aspect of the code you'll want to change to make it look amazing on your own website. Let's get started. So here we are inside Squarespace and I have a product with multiple variants. Now these variants are responding to the code or the site style for my secondary buttons, but I want them to be customized. So we're going to use CSS to change that. Now, if you see drop downs and not these buttons, I want you to hop into edit mode and edit the design. We'll scroll up here and select edit section. And here we have variant display set to button. Again, this is an edit mode, edit the section. And instead of drop down, have it set to button and you'll be able to customize these buttons with CSS. And I'll select exit. And we're going to navigate to design and then we're going to select custom CSS at the bottom. This is where we're going to paste our codes. I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what we're working on. But again, all these codes are in the description below. This first code just changes the style of the variant button and I'll walk you through it here. This first part of the code right here is the selector saying, hey, we're about to change this particular type of button. After that, we've changed the background color. I used a hex color code for a light yellow here, but you can use any color code you want. Maybe make it a light blue. You can use a web safe color name like green if you want to. Any color that you're comfortable with, update the background color. After that, we've given it a border. I said I want the border to be solid. I want it to be 2px and I want it to be this specific color. Again, super customizable. Change it to anything you want. After that, I set the border radius back to zero. Now, if we remove this line, I want you to see all of my buttons on this particular website were rounded. That's the style of my secondary button. I wanted to change that for variance, so I set the border radius back to zero. Now, maybe you want to try something like 10px for curving in the corners just a little bit. Super customizable. Add whatever code you'd like. Then after that, I adjusted the font size to make sure it was large enough to read. Don't have to add that line of code if you don't need to, and feel free to change this value if you want it to be larger or smaller. One other code I forgot to add here is to change the actual color of the text. That was a hover effect there. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and just change the color of this text while it's not in a hover state. I'm going to say color blue important. And now the text has changed to a blue. So feel free to adjust that again to any color you'd like. Now you might be wondering why I keep saying exclamation point important. This button is trying to match the style of the secondary button on my website. So I have to make sure that the browser notices my code over the other code that it's seeing. So that's why I have to keep saying important. Now, don't worry, that won't slow down your site any and won't have any impact on the way that it loads. But it's just a way to make sure that the browser pays attention to what we're doing. All right, let's get into that hover effect, one of my favorite things to code. I'm going to grab this code right here and we'll scroll back up to see our buttons. I'm going to add a new line here for the hover effect. And this is going to change the background color, the color of the font, and we've given it a unique box shadow. Now I didn't add exclamation point important to the box shadow because that's not overriding anything. There's no box shadow on these buttons. That's a new code that we added and customizable. You don't have to have that if you don't want it. But let's take a look at this hover effect. Notice the background color changes, the color of the font changes, and we're getting that shadow there. Pretty cool stuff. All right, now let's say we want to just remove the box shadow completely. Just remove that line of code. It'll go away. Just the colors will change. Again, super customizable and totally up to you. Change whatever aspect of the style you want. This is the background color, and this is the color of the font specifically on a hover. I've got one more selector we're working with here, and that is the selected button style. When you've selected a variant and made that choice for a specific product, it has its own unique style, and I want us to be able to customize that too. So I'm going to enter a new line. There we go. And I'll paste the code right here. Now, this selected button style, what it does is it changes the background, it changes the color of the text, and it changes the border and the border radius. Again, remove whatever you want and update whatever you want. Let's go ahead and change this background to a bright yellow, and we'll change the color to red. It's going to look terrible, but you'll see the example here. I'll select save. Now I can't click on this right now while we're editing it in CSS. So let's go ahead and take a look at the site preview. And now when we select an option, notice how the style changes. Pretty interesting, right? Okay, let's go back here to our code so I can show you exactly what colors those were. 
This is the background that we've adjusted, the color of the font. We also changed the border and the border radius. Now, if you want to leave it exactly the same style as the other buttons when they're not selected, just remove that code. If you want to change the colors, maybe give it a different hex color code in here, a web save color name. Again, edit whatever you want within these curly brackets right here and right here if you want to change something that's selected. Now, above here, we've got the hover effect. And at the very top, we have the initial button itself. Whatever you decide to customize, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. All the codes that we just used are listed in the description below. Just make sure you customize them so they're uniquely yours. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I truly hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. I have a few other tutorials about storefronts and products that I've linked in the description below. So definitely check those out if you're ready to customize more. Thanks again for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. Now available in a Notion database, you can have access to all of the custom codes that I use for modifying Squarespace websites. In here, you'll find selectors, pre-made style snippets, and a bunch of pro tips. So even if you're brand new to all things CSS, you're going to love the content you'll find here. To get lifetime access to this Notion database of custom code for Squarespace, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.